Hello everyone, in this video I'll be showing you how to make a script for After Effects that automatically imports footage and audio, edits them into a video, renders them out, encodes them in Media Encoder, and uploads them for you. So basically the way this works is I have a folder here with some clips as well as a song, and a folder called AE Renders, and what this script will do is import all of these files in this predefined folder as you can see right here. It's then going to edit them, export them to this AE Renders folder, and inside of Adobe Media Encoder, I have a watch folder set up for that AE Renders folder, which is then going to take the exported video, convert it to an H.264 and MP3 file, and then put them onto this Google Drive folder that will automatically upload them to a server. So if I go ahead and run this script really quick, I've put in a pause here so we can go ahead and see what it does. You can see it's imported our clips, edited them in sequence here and added an audio file and then it adds them to the render queue and starts rendering them for us and once the file is finished rendering out of after effects it's going to open up a new project so we can run the script again if we need to and as you can see we now have a video file inside of our ae renders folder and if we go into media encoder you can see it's now encoding it into an h264 and an mp3 file and once adobe media encoder has encoded our two files they're going to then appear into our Google Drive YouTube Uploads folder. And as you can see, we have our MP3 file uploaded already. And our two files, which will combine into our H.264 format, will be uploaded as well. So to get started, the first thing we need to do is set up our watch folders inside of Adobe Media Encoder. So under Watch Folders, I'll click on the Add button. And I'll navigate to my AE Renders folder and select it. Then we can go ahead and set up any preset encoding that we want to do. And I'll also set my output format to, in this case, my YouTube uploads folder for Google Drive. And I'll go ahead and click on my watch folder and add an output just so we can have two. And I'll choose MP3. And again, choose my Google Drive folder. Now that that's done, we'll go ahead and code it. So I'll open a new JavaScript file here and zoom in a bit. We'll start off with our app.begin undo group, which will allow us to undo things. And we'll make sure we have our end undo group. And I'll just call this automagic. Now we're going to want to set up a variable for our folder where we're getting files from. So I'll just say my folder equals a new folder. And we're going to pass through our string that is our folder. So I'll use my general reference there, two backslashes and desktop. And the reason we want to use two backslashes because if I just use one, it's going to say backslash T. Well, that's a tab indentation, which we don't want. So I'll reference my test folder. And I'm going to make another variable called my import options. And I'll say this is equal to new import options. And I'll make a variable called imported layers. And we'll make that an array to represent each layer we import to After Effects. Then to actually grab our files, I'll make a variable called my files and I'll set it equal to my folder and we'll use a function called get files. And inside of here, we can pass through a string with an asterisk and then our file type that we want to import. And I'll also make one called my audio files, which I'm going to get the MP3 files from here. And then just so I have an array with all of my files in it, I'll make one called all my files. And I'll set this equal to my files, so all the video files, and I'm going to concatenate or add my audio files to it. So that way we have the length of both the audio and video files. Then I'll go ahead and make a variable called our number of files. That way we can keep track of them and easily loop through them in a for loop. And we'll set this equal to all my files dot length. And then I'm going to create a variable to keep track of our audio and video. So I'll just say num audio equals zero and num visual equals zero as well. And then finally, I'm going to need an array for my audio and an array for my videos. And this is just where we're going to store them so we can recall them later and have full access to them. So now we'll go ahead and make a for loop here. We'll just say var i equals zero for i is less than all my files dot length which in this case should be four. We're going to increment i by one. And inside of here, we'll say my import options dot file equals all my files and the current index. Then we'll say imported layers, which is our array we defined up here, 
app.push. And inside of here, we're going to pass through app.project.import file. So this is actually us importing the file in here. And we're just going to pass through import options. So it's basically going to go through all of the files it's importing. My import options is going to equal the current file. And then we're actually going to import the file. So if I run this in After Effects, you can see so far we've just gotten to the point where we can import all of the files from our predefined folder. Now I'm going to set up a variable called duration and I'll set it equal to zero. This is something we're going to use to figure out how long our composition should be. So we'll go ahead and type in another for loop here. I'll just say var e equals one and for e is less than or equal to app.project.numItems which is just how many items we've imported basically. We'll increment by one. And now we need to distinguish between audio files and video files. So we'll go ahead and set up two if statements. In the first one, we'll say if app.project.itemE has video equals true. So basically if it's a video and if it has video, we're going to say num visual plus plus. That way for every video file we recognize, We'll add that to our num visual and we'll also say visual array dot push and we'll push in our current item so app dot project dot item e and for duration because we want to have our composition be the length of all of our video files combined we'll just say duration plus equals our current item which will be a video item since it's under the if statement and we'll add the duration then for our other if statement, we'll grab our current item. And we're gonna say if it has video equals false. And if our current item has audio equals true, well, we know it's an audio file. So we'll increment up our num audio and we'll grab our audio array and we're going to push our current item. So now we need to go ahead and create our composition itself. So I'll create a variable called temp comp and I'll set this equal to app.project.items and we're going to add a comp which takes a few arguments the first of which is the name I'll just call it test comp then we need the width the height the pixel aspect ratio the duration of the comp which we already have a variable conveniently named that and the frame rate and then I'm also just going to open the comp in the viewer by saying open in viewer and now we need to actually import our items into the composition. So I'll start off by creating a variable called start time and set it equal to zero. That way we can easily go through each of our items and sequentially order them. So I'll create one more for loop for this script. I'll just say var q equals zero. Q is less than our visual array dot length because we're just dealing with our video files here and I'll increment q by one. And I'll just set up a var in here called this layer so we don't have to keep typing in app.project.current layer or whatever. And I'll set this layer equal to our temp comp dot layers. And we're going to add our visual array in the current index. So our visual array contains all of our video files that we've imported. So we're just going to loop through all of those and import each one into our comp. Then I'm going to call this layer dot audio enabled and I'm going to set it equal to false just so we can turn off all the audio in our video files since we are adding background music. Then I'm going to say this layer start time is equal to start time. So the first time it iterates through this, the start time is going to be zero, but now we need to increment it somehow. So I'll say start time equals this layer dot out point. So say our first layer's out point was 10 seconds. The next time it iterates through this, the start time will be 10. So now we just need to add our audio file in. So I'll create a variable called audio layer and I'll set that equal to our temporary comp dot layers. And since we only have one audio element, I'm just going to call audio array and grab the zero width element. And then to clip it at the end, so it's the same duration as our comp, I'll say audio layer dot out point equals duration. So now if we go ahead and run this, you can see it imports all of our layers sequences our clips and puts in our audio file and puts it to the proper length. So finally, we just need to render this out. So I'll create a variable called my file and this will be equal to a new file. And inside of here, we'll create a custom string for the output file location and name. So I'll refer to my desktop and our test folder 
and the AE renders folder. And then I'm just going to add the temp comp dot name and add the extension that I'm going to be exporting at, which will be MOV. Then we'll set up a variable that references our render queue. So I'll just call it the render equals app dot project dot render queue. And we're going to go into the items of the render queue and we're going to add something. And we're just going to add our temp comp. So if we go ahead and run this, you can see it puts it into our render queue. And now we just need to set up the output module and the output location. So to do this, we'll call our render object and we'll reference the output modules, which is basically, this is the first output module right here. So we'll grab the first one there and we're going to apply a template. And inside of here, we can pass through a string of any output module templates. You can see these are all templates right here. So if I wanted to do a JPEG export, I could just type in JPEG. But in this case, I have this nice MOV preset. So I'm going to go into my template settings, copy it and paste it into here. And I also referenced MOV up here because I already knew I was gonna be exporting as MOV. But say you wanted to do a lossless AVI export, you would set this to .avi. All right, now we just need to set up our output location here. So to do that, we'll reference our render again, the first output module and the file. And we're just going to set this equal to my file since we already got that up here. So now if we go ahead and run it, you can see it automatically sets up our output module to what we selected. And if we check our output location, it's in our AE renders folder with the proper name. So now we'll go ahead and go outside of our app.end undo group. And I'm going to say app.project.render queue. And we're just going to run the function render, which will automatically press that render button for us. And there's two more lines of code we got to write. We'll say app.project.close, which will close our project. And we'll say app.newProject. And if you look at page about 116 of the scripting guide, you can see we have all of our close options in here. So we can say close options do not save changes, which will not bring up a dialogue for the user to save. And I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. You can also choose to prompt to save, but the whole purpose of this script is to be an automated process so that the user doesn't have to click on anything. And then after that, it's going to create a new project. So the script is now ready to run. I'm going to go ahead and put in a pause after it adds the audio layer, just so we can see that it's working properly. So after we add our audio layer, I'm just going to say pause and we'll go ahead and run the script. So you can see we've imported our footage, it's cut it properly and added our audio file and we'll click on OK to continue it. And you can see it's now rendering it. And one thing I've noticed is while running the script and automatically rendering, it will look like it gets stuck at a certain point, but it is actually rendering in the background, so just be patient. And once the render is complete, you can see it didn't ask to save the project and it opened a new one so you can simply run the script again. If we look in our test folder, you can see in our AE renders, we have our exported MOV. And if we go into media encoder, you can see it's already done our MP3 file and now it's encoding our H.264 file. And once media encoder has finished encoding all of your desired file types, if we go into our Google Drive YouTube uploads folder, you can see we've got our MP3 and our two about to be combined files, which will be our H.264 and those will be uploaded onto a server or you can upload them or send them to your client. I'll put all of the code for this in the description below so you can download it and use it yourself and make any adjustments. Of course, you're going to want to change your default folder. And if you're on a Mac, you're going to want to use forward slashes instead of backslashes. And you don't have to double up like this. You can just use one. But yeah, that's it for this video. You guys could implement this however you want to add transitions, fade ins, fade outs, or whatever. Right now, it's just a simple implementation for simple editing. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more weekly videos, and we'll see you in the next one.